Hi, welcome to Geek Toolkit. I'm Joe Farrow, and I'm new to YouTube, so this is my intro. All right, let's get rid of that. And what I want to talk about today is how joysticks work. The reason I want to talk about how joysticks work is I wanted to talk about how to fix the Commodore 64 joystick, which looks like this over here on the right. And I started doing the video for this and I realized that it doesn't make sense unless you kind of understand what's going on. And the reason I created Geek Toolkit is I wanted to teach people a bit about the technology behind what I'm talking about. I didn't want to just show it. I wanted to help people understand the why. For if you understand the why, it'll help you troubleshoot, it'll help you learn, it'll help you do projects in the future on your own. So what we're talking about today is how joysticks work in relation to this one here on the right called the C64 Mini. Um, this joystick is a clone of one, I believe it's called the Competition Pro joystick. And what I'll do is I'll talk about how joysticks work and then I'll talk about why this one was not so great. And I'm sure I'll stumble through it because this is my first time doing it in this way. So let's get back to this uh, overhead setup that took me about an hour to get going last night. And what I've got here is, uh, by the way, my my joystick looks like this now because I've shredded it. This is what the Commodore 64 Mini joystick looks like after a teardown. I don't want to bore you with taking screws out. Uh, but one interesting note is the bottom has some weights in it to help give it a little bit of heft so it doesn't feel like cheap plastic. Um, normally I have some buttons in here. I think I just felt someone fly by. Yeah, there's a button. There's a bunch of buttons over there. And it's... Uh, had a cable coming out the top. It's a USB cable and This is the board that was in it. So here, let's do this There's the board and It's got a mod on it. So ignore all these wires that are kind of dangling off I'll take care of those um, in the next video. I'll explain what those are But you can see that the top two buttons are right here. These white ones are the top two and then at the bottom, you've got the four circles. So this is it. This is basically a mapping of that, that joystick. Now, before we get into that and my broken solder joint that I just ripped off, I want to talk about how... Oh, no, I ran out of paper. Um, <laughs> okay. But this is... Let's see. Let's just, aha. I'm going to talk about how buttons work. Yeah, there we go, that works. So inside of a joystick or a computer, you've got a microprocessor. And microprocessors or computer chips, they have these pins coming off the side of them. And if you can imagine this pin can take a signal when it's closed. It's like a switch or a button. And a joystick, even the directions on a joystick, up, down, left, right, they, in the end, for, they activate a button-like um, circuit here. So this is how, how they draw the circuit. And this is open right here. That's open. When it's closed, it's just a line. Okay. I want to talk about another concept real quick. Uh, say you have 5 volts and 0 volts. And you have a signal that's at 5 volts. And then this circuit closes. What happens is it gets pulled down to zero volts while it's closed. And then when it opens again, it goes up to five volts. What that means is when you press, the computer basically gets, if we consider a five volt a one, the computer is just getting a one every time it queries. It says, hey, is a joystick, what do you got? It's like, I have a one for that direction. When you press the button or the direction, then all of a sudden the, the computer will see a zero and it'll know that something's changed and that that's been activated, okay? So what I'm saying is, if you press a button here, the computer gets a zero. Now, why a zero and not a one? Well, the way this joystick's made, and I, I believe a lot of them, is this joystick gets pulled down to ground. Okay, so if you were to connect, a, uh, let's see, I've got a jumper wire in my hand here. If I were to connect this button to a ground wire, then it, oh, it will actually send a button press uh, for that button. 
Now when I show this, let's get rid of this mess. When I show this, let's see, how am I gonna do this? I've got the Commodore 64 Mini actually running on this little screen right here. This is a, a Kumon screen. Uh, and I need to get it closer. Let's see, is that closer? So you have to get now. Uh, let's see, let's see if we can build a tripod real quick. Here we go, I got some Kleenex. Yeah, there we go, okay. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there we go. So there's a game running on the Commodore 64 Mini on this Kumon screen. By the way, these screens are amazing. They've got a full size uh, HDMI port on them. They've got audio out. And then um, you just run a USB power cord to them here and uh, off they go. They're, they use micro USB power. They can also be powered off Raspberry Pi via GPIOs and such. Okay, so that game, I've got this character. Let's see if I can point to this character here. This little guy here, I'm gonna make him move by hitting this button. Oh, no, not, because, uh, there we go. I, I exited the game by mistake, let's see. Okay, there we go. And when I hit this button, you'll see him move. There he goes. Now I'm gonna show you an alternative way to make a move. We're gonna take these four wires at the bottom here. These go to the USB connection that's plugged into the C64 Mini. USB uh, wires have a ground, which is this black wire, a power, which I believe is this red, and then the white and green are signal. So a USB 2.0 connection is a four wire connector. Uh, that's super useful to know if you ever need to pull power off USB or if you wanna make a quick five volt um, power cord, you can just cut a USB cable and hook up red black. It's a cool little hack to know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect a cable to the ground here, and then I'm going to press it onto the joystick button and show you that the game actually responds because we're pulling a signal down the ground. So let's see here. Um, I'm going to click the, uh, these top two buttons are the power, the joystick buttons. So if I connect this to ground, we should see him jump. There he goes. And we see him jumping. This is the worst way to control a game ever, but it shows the point of if we make a connection between ground and a button, we can make our, our own, uh, basically input into the system. In the next video, I'm going to show how we're going to use that knowledge to make this joystick better. For now, I just want to talk about what are the problems with this joystick and why I think uh, it hasn't been reviewed. If you look at a lot of the C64 Mini reviews or watch them on YouTube, you'll see a lot of people really hammer on the joystick. There's a couple of things here. One is, I think it's just the, the nature of retro. There's a really good discussion in C64 Mini forum posts about these old joysticks used to be used by being kind of held to a table sometimes, and then they were more stable. As a matter of fact, some of the joysticks, the older ones, had suction cups on them to hold them to the tables. That's just how they were meant to be used. Another thing is that this, again, was made after one of the more popular Commodore 64 joysticks, the Competition Pro. But this mechanism that it uses of these rubber pads it's basically a rubber pad with a piece of metal in it and then it presses down on uh down here basically let's see if i can get that to focus you'll see like a squiggly uh wire it shorts that to ground when you press on this and it's kind of a mushy feel it's very popular in gamepad technologies if you look at some of the super nest pads i was doing some like teardown uh browsing and finding out that that's actually a very common gamepad technique. However, again, it's a joystick that we're using. So what could they have used? Well, they could have used micro switches. I'm gonna switch over to the browser real quick and show. This is the, a Competition Pro style joystick. And this is the bottom of it. This is over on uh, breadbox64.com where they, they have an article about joystick maintenance. This is the inside of that joystick, and these are what are called micro switches. 
And what you can see here, if, if you ever use a keyboard that has like cherry switches where they're clicky, that's what a micro switch does. It gives you a noise, like so you get audible feedback and you get a very satisfying click when you move. It doesn't feel squishy, it feels clicky. The Competition Pro joystick that uh, the later models that this was modeled after were had micro switches in them. And they chose to go with uh, kind of the gamepad squishy look. Now, well, squishy feel, I should say. Here, let's get this uh, out of the way and I'll show you what micro switches are like. They're not for everyone. Joysticks are very subjective, right? This is a quick shot. Um, this is a, uh, I believe, Commodore era joystick. It has a DB9 connector. These are not serial ports. Serial ports have a different pinout. It's a DB9 connector. Uh, it has the suction cup bottom. And when you stick this down, it's very, very stable. And it's almost like having an arcade in your home. You see when I move it, well, you hear when I move it, or fire, it's very clicky. It's a micro switch based joystick. Ideally, that's what this would have been. However, it wasn't. So my next video, I'm going to show some techniques from the Commodore 64 forum uh, on Facebook, the C64 mini forum, I should say. It's not the Commodore 64, it's C64 mini forum, where they talk about a way to solve this. For now, I just wanted to have a video that kind of talked about how these things worked and what I believe is the technical reason why people are unhappy with this joystick. If you've used this joystick, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please uh, post in the comments below. If you want to see the next video, please subscribe. And if you hit the little bell icon, you'll get a notification when I get it uploaded. Hopefully it'll be in the next week or so. And uh, if you like this video, please give it a like. What that does for the for me is it gives me some feedback to let me know am I on the right track. And um, you know, you can also leave comments. Let me know what you like, what you don't like. I want to make the best use of your time, so I'm going to try to keep these videos short. Hope you appreciate it. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next episode.